Hi everyone, hope you all doing well. Welcome back to our channel. And in this video, we are going to discuss about software inventory in threat and vulnerability management. If you're watching the series from the beginning, in the last video, we have discussed about the remediation process. Whereas in this video, we are going to discuss about software inventory management, how exactly it works, which softwares are not supported by threat and vulnerability management, what is software evidence and how to report inaccuracy. So what you see now is the deck that I have used in our threat and vulnerability management video where I've discussed about different set of options available on the console. And in this video, we are going to check all the details about software inventory. First prerequisite is to make sure all the devices are onboarded to Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. As for the discovery purpose, same data captured by sensors is used for software inventory. Now the expected behavior is, as soon as the device is onboarded to Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, it will start showing you the list of all the softwares as well as the vulnerabilities associated with them. But currently that's not the case. Now this is because of two different categories of software. Think about one as supported software and the other one as unsupported software. Any software for which CPE is defined is termed as supported software because vulnerabilities are published for these softwares. But now the question is what exactly this CPE is all about. CPE stands for Common Platform Enumeration which is a structured naming convention for softwares and packages. The best resource to check more detail about CPE is the NVD site, which is nvd.nist.gov forward slash products forward slash CPE. Let me show you this on the browser. So what you see now is the NVD site where all the documentation regarding CPE is available. If you want to know more about CPE, please read the respective documentation on the site. Now, since we know the relevance of CPE, which is vulnerabilities are only published for those softwares which have valid CPE. Microsoft Defender for Endpoint TVM currently only supports software for which CPE are defined. The other category is unsupported software. And now the definition context is obvious. Any software for which CPE is not defined can be termed as unknown software. And the list of vulnerabilities is also not available for these softwares. In fact, there is a way to check the list of unsupported software in your enterprise by simply applying a filter of no weaknesses. So basically, to summarize this from an experience perspective or how the data will be available on the console. Currently, softwares without CPE are not listed in software inventory page. Instead, they are listed in device specific software inventory section. To make it more relatable, in my demo, I have a device where I have installed an app called 5K Player. When I go to the software inventory list, it is not showing up there. But if I navigate to device and then click on software inventory, it is getting listed here. And as you can see, product CPE is showing as not available for the software. Being honest, I don't know why Microsoft update health tools and Intune management extensions also don't have CPE defined. Now let me show you all this in action. So the first thing that I would like to talk about is global software inventory, which is basically the list of all the softwares with valid CPE. So what you see now is one of my browser where I have signed into security.microsoft.com, which is M365 Defender Portal. And then I'm inside vulnerability management. And now I'm going to click on software inventory. This list that you see over here is the global list of all the applications that exist on the devices which have been onboarded to MDE. 
now if you want you can change this list or you can view this list as per a specific device group the same concept that we have discussed in our dashboard video that means what you see now is the global view because I have selected all the devices but if I want I can choose a specific device and then I can view this list which is specifically for a specific device group altogether the first section is name then you have OS platform then you have vendor then you have weaknesses weaknesses is basically the list of CVEs associated with the specific software altogether then this section is showing you if there is any breach inside that's happening uh, with this particular application or if there is any active threat campaign which is running and the vulnerability that exists uh, with the software can be exploited then this list is basically the list of uh, devices or the number of devices on which this application or the software exists the impact of this application on the secure score itself and then the tags now, if you guys remember the feature that i was discussing or the screenshot that i have shown which was basically related to filter and the agenda was to go ahead and view the list of all the unsupported software that exist on my devices so all I have to do is I have to click on filter and then click on weaknesses or in the weaknesses section select this option which says not available the moment I will click on apply this list over here will get customized and I will get the list of all the unsupported softwares which exist in my devices which I have onboarded to MDE but again there is a lot more discrepancies in terms of how this information is being shown because as I've explained before that for those applications where CPE is not defined the actual view is shown in the device context view itself okay so the next thing that I would like to talk about is the device specific software inventory itself which is basically the list of all the softwares with or without CPE. So let's say now if I go to device inventory and if I select one of my device, which is MDE hyphen TVM hyphen two, the same device that I've used to showcase an example in the deck. And now let's say I open this particular device object and then I'll click on software inventory. As you can see, 5K player is getting listed over here, but it was not available in the software inventory section. Now, if you guys remember the same detail in the screenshot itself, the product CPE section is not available for this. That's why the vulnerabilities related to this particular application cannot be discovered. This is how it is. This is the behavior currently by design. It has been documented by Microsoft. I will be sharing the link in the description. If you guys want, please go ahead and read that article. The next thing that I would like to talk about is what is software evidence? This is basically details about software. Likewise, the location path where the files associated with that software exist on the device and the registry path. So let's come back to our console and select the same application, which is 5K player. You can see in the software evidence section, I'm getting registry path. But let's say if I select any other application, let's say I select edge, I'm getting file path as well as registry path. So basically, depending upon the app type that you're trying to view, these details will be mentioned on the portal. The next thing that I would like to talk about is how to report inaccuracy. Let's say you found some discrepancies in terms of the data that you can see on the portal and what is actually there in your enterprise. Think about a use case scenario wherein you are aware of that there is no as such device that exists in your enterprise where Notepad++ is installed. Just a hypothetical example. In that case, if the application is getting listed over here, the first aspect of reporting inaccuracy is at the global level, wherein I'm saying that this software does not even exist or this software is not even installed in any of my endpoint that exists in my enterprise. Or let's say there are some changes or discrepancies that you see from an attribute specific 
uh, details related to an application that means you you know a different name or different version and some other details are getting mentioned over here so you can actually report inaccuracy for a specific software from the root view itself and this kind of reporting can be termed as global reporting for inaccuracy okay the next section is device wherein a software does not exist on the device or let's say it has been uninstalled and there is a gap of four hours but still that information is getting shown on the portal because when you uninstall any application on the device it takes around four hours to get completely removed from the reporting perspective okay or let's say there is a wrong version getting reported you have some version on the device but when you come to the portal there is a different version altogether which is getting listed in that case the second aspect of reporting at inaccuracy is at the device level itself but then i can go to one of my device let's say i go to the same device again and let's say i have uninstalled a specific version of dotnet framework let's take an example of the first one itself then i can click on report inaccuracy and now when you will select a reason there will be three different options the first one is wrong software version is reported software does not exist on the device and again some discrepancies in terms of the name or versions that exist on the device compared to what is getting shown on the portal itself the last thing that I would like to talk about is software page okay now you can choose any path either from this particular console or from the root view itself and then click on open software page now this is basically all the information that is associated with any software that exists or that has been discovered by TVM and which is a supported software because for unsupported software it will show you very limited details now the reason behind that is vulnerabilities are only published with those applications which have valid CPEs okay so let's come back to software inventory and choose an application for which there are certain weaknesses getting listed so then it will be easier to explain okay the first section that you see here is basically entity driven i mean this kind of information is actually extracted from cpe itself wherein who is the vendor which is the os platform then it has uh, the scope for your organization i mean for how many devices it has been installed and out of those devices how many of them are exposed if there is any exploit available if there is any recommendation and what is impact on the secure score this section is clearly visible and it's exceptionally easy to relate it's basically the overview when we talk about security recommendation i have clearly explained this in a lot more detail when we were actually talking about remediation actions if you have not watched that video please go ahead and watch that video as well but just to summarize this security recommendation action will show you a remediation that can be triggered as of now the remediation that you see over here has been added under exception that's why this button is grayed out otherwise i could have just clicked on this option and initiate a remediation action which will trigger or create a task in the endpoint manager portal this section that you see over here is basically the list of all the cves associated with this particular application then the list of the device where this application exists what is the version distribution how many versions exist in your enterprise if there are any missing kbs for this particular application which has not been installed for some reason the last option is event timeline which will be the entry point for our next video so to summarize we have discussed each and everything which is moreover related to how applications are discovered and how TVM shows you the respective vulnerabilities associated with a specific software. Let's talk about a quick summary of what all we have discussed. We have discussed about software inventory management, how exactly it works, what are the supported softwares, which softwares are not supported, what is software evidence, 
how to report inaccuracy and full details about software page on the console itself. In the next video, we are going to talk about event timeline. If you think that this channel is helping you to learn anything new, please feel free to subscribe and share this video with your technical community. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time.